Good evening, everyone. Uh, tonight, I will be briefly discussing responsive design, responsive uh, HTML design, and I will run through an example with uh, a plugin, uh, a jQuery plugin that is called uh, Masonry. It is a plugin that I know now, but I'm sure there are other plugins with other uh, libraries and so forth. So uh, what I intend to do with this example is to start for with a blank file and start writing the code from scratch so you can see how I can accomplish uh, this responsive design. But before I do so, I would like to uh, define what responsive design is. Responsive uh, HTML design is basically that uh, which entails designing your elements in such a way that once the uh, viewport or the screen, that the viewport of your screen, the de device uh, view is changed, then the elements uh, will reorder themselves in a fashion that suits that device or that viewport. And uh, you will see through this example how this, this appears visually. So I will begin by uh, writing some code. I will start with a blank file. Before I do this though, the, here's the website for, for the masonry plugin. Uh, you can find this at uh, masonry.desandro.com forward slash index.html. As you can see, you can uh, click on this link, which will download the library, the masonry library. You, in addition to this, you will need to already have loaded the uh, main jQuery library. You can do this from a local uh, installation or local copy that you might have or through uh, the reference to a uh, CDN. Content Delivery Network, uh, a very popular one is Google. Google hosts uh, jQuery in one of their servers. And uh, on the left side, you can see that there's a, there are plenty of demos and uh, there's documentation on the options for this as well as, as the methods involved. Okay, um, I've already gone through some of this, so I know a little bit more than you do at this point. I will start by writing some code and then We'll see what that does. Okay, I'll start with a blank file called index.php. And I want this to be a, an HTML5 file. Oops, sorry. Okay. And then ne next I'll define the head and title. Now this is not uh, indented, but in your projects you will need to indent your markup. I can go ahead and do this anyway. Okay, so I have a basic HTML file now. Can someone recommend or, or suggest what I should do next? Think, uh, think about including libraries and where, where would I include them? Okay, let's go back to the jQuery masonry page and look at the, uh, click on the introduction link and they make it pretty easy for us to do this ourselves. And th the way it works is that you define a, a container, a div container, whereby uh, you insert other sub divs and those, will, uh, those divs will host your content. And in order to make this work, in order to actually have the library available, we need to um, reference the First of, first of all, we need to reference the jQuery library from uh, a CDN. If I can copy this. Okay, I'll copy this and paste it in my head script, in my head tags. Okay, so this first, uh, this first script is the main jQuery script that will be loaded here. And the second script is the actual masonry library. Uh, I have conveniently already downloaded this library. It's just a file. 
and I've renamed it to masonry.js. So the way I would refer to it here is just simply delete all of this text and call this masonry, lowercase masonry, .js. So at this point, if I, if I were to load this page, I really should have nothing, but the libraries should be loaded. Okay, the next step here is to, per the documentation, is to create a div container with a bunch of uh, divs inside it. And this is what I will do next. And I'll give it an ID of container. And this is arbitrary, it's just you can call it whatever you like. And let's suppose that I want to display well, before I, I, I put in any content, let's see what, what else we need to do here based on the doc documentation. So it seems like there are some CSS rules that I need to apply as well. Making the width of the item 220 pixels, which is roughly a fifth of a, a common desktop uh, viewport in width. A margin is to have uh, 10 pixels to have some space on the left and on the right and on the top and the bottom, of course. And float is to have the item floated. I'm going to copy this and paste it under, well, I don't have any style tags here. So let's go ahead and start with a style, start off as a style tag. Okay. CSS. And this is where I put my my rules. Now, notice that this that the actual class that this is referring to is called item, and this is what I will need to um, label or stamp my subdivs with. So suppose I create an item here. It will need to have a class of item. Okay, let's see what else the documentation calls for. Okay, calls for a function to be run and a built-in uh, masonry method to be called. Oh, uh, I'm not sure I know how to zoom in. But I'm going to copy this code so you, you should, you'll be able to see it. Uh, Okay, so I've done, so the first script tag calls for the main jQuery library to be loaded. The second one calls for the masonry library to be loaded. And the third script tag will have our own custom code. Everything we need to put here. I want to make this a little visually more appealing. Okay, so we we're bas basically ready to go with this with this page, except that we don't have any uh, any items here to sh to show. And I would like to show some images. I grabbed some earlier on before before class. I grabbed some image URLs off the internet, and uh, I plan on displaying these ima those images here. So I'll open an image tag image and. SRC equals to, and this should, so the image URL should be contained here between those two, between these two quotes. And I've pasted some image URLs in a separate file. With, um, I'm going to copy this one, paste it here, and then I will do the same. Let me 
me grab the other image URL. Copy. Oops. And we'll paste it in here. So now I should have, if I paste it here, I should have two, two images appearing on this page. If it all work correctly. And I do have two images. Now I need to resize these images to fit the grid layout that will be applied by the, the masonry plugin. And uh, I think the best way to do this is to just resize the image to fit the column because will, this will be divided essentially into five 220 pixel pieces or columns. Now I can do this simply by going to the style rules and adding a new style rule for the images. And I'll make sure that my images are with 220 pics. Okay, now I have two images next to one another. Let's see if we can replicate this code to have more images. And then maybe you can appreciate the usefulness of responsive layouts. I want to copy this, these same two images over and over, just enough to span across the page and down a little bit. Okay. Perhaps one more time should do it. Okay, <coughs> let's see what happens now. Okay, so I have a bunch of images. Okay, I'm trying not to show you the prefab code because then it will be maybe harder to see what I'm doing. Okay, what should happen here, if, if I did this correctly, is that when I squeeze this over, the images will align with respect to the newly um, to the new viewport, so as you can see, the closer I, I squeeze this in, the the more the uh, divs align correctly, or they squeeze together. There is an option that I can include in this, in the masonry call, which is called is animated and which makes it much more appealing. And I can set that to true. And let's see what this does on our end. Go to refresh. I'm not sure why these are overlapping. So let's see if this works. As you can see, there's a little, they're animating now. Okay, now I can, <coughs> I can copy and paste some existing code I created for this, which is essentially the same code, but I've added some new features a very simple feature, which is, let me refresh this. So I have, I have added here uh, two links. Each one will call a separate method that will create, grab a random image and append it or prepend it to this document, uh, uh, to, to this DOM. 
and then it would call the the masonry reload function, which rearranges the items based on their new viewport. And let me just quickly show you what I'm doing here. So there's a function called get random image, and what it does is it creates a new image array. And here I am storing three different images, and then I'm generating a random image each time. I first uh, generate a number from zero to two randomly, and then I assign that, I, I pull out that image uh, based on its position in the array. And there's another function I created called append image. And what this does is first calls the get random image, which shuffles the, which pulls a new image. And then it appends the, this following HTML markup to the container div. And lastly, it applies the, calls the masonry dot masonry reload uh, dot masonry method with the parameter reload, which c makes the page reload, uh, not really reload, but it just adjusts the element elements to the new uh, viewport. Prepend does the same thing, except that it inserts the object or the div, the image div f first into the DOM. So let me show you what this looks like in action. If I click on append image over and over, it's getting a, a random image. It so happened that the first three times were the same one. And if I click on prepend image, it will start inserting it at the very beginning. And this, the resizing of the window still applies. Each time I squeeze it, it adjusts. So basically, this is what I wanted to demonstrate tonight in today's section. This is a shorter section, but uh, it's been slated for the TA's choice. And this is just a small part of, uh, I'm sure there's lots you can do with responsive design. This is just a small example of it. Uh, feel free to Google around the internet and search for other libraries and other things that you can do with it. And uh, this it concludes the, our semester as well. And Chris, would you like to say a bit for a while as well with me? So Chris Gerber will be ho holding uh, on-campus office hours now. And since he's here, I'm um, taking this opportunity to, would you like to say something? Thank you. Well, I'd just like to thank everyone for their attention this year and uh, for coming out. It's been a lot of fun working with all of you, especially uh, the, for those of you we haven't met in person, just the di discussions on the discussion board. It's really been great. I hope that you've all taken away a lot from the class and that you've enjoyed it as much as we have. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you.